This is the new Range Rover Evoque and it's a little bit like some posh stiletto shoes because yeah, it's super sexy and women love them. Unlike these shoes though, this car's quite practical and I'll get onto that in a minute. Now, if you're considering this kind of car, you're probably also looking at the Audi Q3, the Volvo XC40 and the BMW X1. And this Evoque is a little bit more expensive than those. It starts from £31,500, but you can save an average of £500 on one through car wow. Now, if you want to check that you're paying the right price on a new car, click on the pop out banner just up there in the top right hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video or just Google car wow to check out the best prices you can get from our trusted dealers. Now I know what you're thinking, this is supposed to be the new Evoque, but it looks a lot like the old Evoque, but believe me, all the body panels are new. In fact, the only thing that's carried over from the old Evoque are the door hinges. This actually has a lot of the design elements from the Velas. You've got sleek taillights and headlights, and look, poppy outy door handles as well. And I think this is a really smart looking car. It just looks the part, doesn't it? especially if you have the bigger wheels. Lesser models have smaller wheels and they don't look quite so cool, but still, overall, it's a sleek and stylish SUV. Thing continues on the inside as well. It really is quite a simple design in here and I like it. There's not too much clutter at all. You've just got this nice, clean central console. I like the sloping effect of the dash and generally the material quality is good in here. However, there are a few bits and pieces which aren't so great. I mean, look at the the build quality here is just not that brilliant, is it? And the stitching's all a bit higgledy-piggledy as well. Anyway, there are some bits and pieces I do really like in here. For instance, this kind of gloss effect here and here around the infotainment system. Also, you've got some up here as well. And actually, the seating position in this car is pretty good. So you've got plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel. Look at that, it's quite a lot and in the driver's seat as well. So it doesn't really matter whether you're tall or short. And then there's other features as well. Yeah, look, this all feels quite expensive, this visor. It does a good job of blocking out the sun. And of course, there's the all important vanity mirror with a nice little LED light that's very bright so you can do your makeup in there if you want to. Now though, we need to talk about this car's equipment list. The entry level car has a basic 10 inch touchscreen, front and rear parking sensors, and a reversing camera. It also has normal cruise control with auto emergency city braking. The next trim level up is the S and it has an upgraded infotainment system which has a faster processor, Wi-Fi hotspot, satellite navigation included and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It also has leather interior rather than fabric and you get 10-way electrically operated front seats which are also heated. There's traffic sign recognition too and an adaptive speed limiter. The SE model gets some upgraded LED headlights with high beam assist, pulsating indicators and some 20 inch alloy wheels. It also gets a powered tailgate. There's also a secondary touchscreen for controlling the climate control and the heated seats plus a full digital driver's display. And if you ask me, the SE is the pick of the range because it's the perfect balance between equipment and cost. However, if you've got money to burn, why not just get the HSE? Because it gets stuff like a Meridian sound system. It also gets fully automatic cruise control, so it uses a radar to keep you safe distance from the car in front, and it will automatically steer to keep you in lane. But the best upgrade is the clear sight rear view mirror. So at the flick of a switch, the mirror turns into a digital screen, which displays the image from a rear view camera. Now, on top of all that, you can upgrade to the R Dynamic Pack, which adds some styling upgrades. So here on the outside, you get some different bumper designs with air intakes there and some louvers in the bonnet and some upgraded alloy wheel designs, whereas otherwise the car looks just a little bit more plain. On the inside, R Dynamic adds some paddle shifters for the automatic gearbox. You also get Alcantara dark headlining, aluminium pedals and aluminium kick plate. <laughs> Anyway, enough about specs, let's continue with the review. Seeing as this guy's the HSE, it has the top of the range infotainment system and it's generally okay to use. I like the graphics, they're quite sharp. I like the screen as well, but it depends where the light is. It can be a little bit awkward to use because sometimes you can get too much glare in it. However, 
it's not the fastest to respond so sometimes you're left waiting for it to do stuff and it can be a bit jerky the old graphics so it's not the best out there but it's by no means the worst either the digital driver's display is nice and clear however you don't get it on all models one thing that i do struggle with are the touch controls because they are touch sensitive, but also you have to press them. So you're not sure what is the right way to control it. Yes, you can look at different menus and scroll through stuff. So that's quite easy when you're driving along. But once again, it's good, but by no means the best out there. I think the digital driver's display and the infotainment system in the Audi Q3 is slightly better. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Audi Q3, just click up there on the pop-up button in the top right-hand corner of the screen and you can watch that. Let's move on to practicality. So practicality is actually pretty good in this car. Huge door bins. Look, I've got a couple of bottles in there you've also got a fair amount of storage under here and then you have usb input there there's two of them so that's handy and a 12 volt socket as well under here are your cup holders which is good and they're not too deep and they're not too shallow so you can actually hold bottles and smaller coffee cups in there with no problem at all but it is annoying that you have to remove this panel is it beyond the wit of people at land rover to be able to make a sliding cover but no we just have to put up with that and that's enough of that. Also, you've got some more storage down here, which is quite useful as well, so you can hide things out of sight. So maybe I will put my wallet there and then completely forget about it and drive home and think, where the heck is my wallet? Anyway, let's move into the back of the car to talk about practicality there. So the rear doors, they don't open mega wide, but they open wide enough. So that does help when you're trying to maneuver a child seat in here. You do have lift off ice fix anchor points and they're easy to get to, but once again, you might lose those covers. In terms of rear space, now this was not a strong point in the old Evoque. It was quite cramped in the back, but this car is the same size on the outside, but it's actually longer between the front and the back wheels. So you get more rear near room. And actually look at this, it's pretty blooming good. This seat is in my usual driving position. I've got loads of room. What's not so good though, is under seat foot space. So you can't really stretch out underneath. Headroom's actually pretty decent. Look at that. We've got the glass roof on this car, which is a really nice upgrade, and it doesn't eat into headspace too much. So people over six foot, even with the roof there, will be fine. Now, one of the ways that Land Rover has achieved this is by making the seats in the back quite low. If you look at this, there's quite a bit of angle between my knees and my thighs. So I, I feel like I'm squatting a bit. It's not the most comfortable, and you end up with not that much under thigh support, which can be a bit of a pain on longer journeys. So some you win some you lose. In terms of carrying three in the back at once, well, there is a hump in the floor, but it's not too bad. So there is a decent amount of room for everyone's feet. The middle seat is a little bit of a perch, but it's not too bad. However, carrying three in the back at once can be a bit of a struggle for those on the outer seats because of the contour of the seats means that those in the outer two seats do feel a little bit more uncomfortable with the contours actually jabbing into their sides. It's not so great for them. Oh, well, poor them, eh? Now, in terms of other practical features, I like this. I like the reading lights there. Look, decent LED light. You've also got a coat up there, so it's not in your way if you want to hang a coat up. The rear door bins are a decent size as well. Look, loads of room. You've got some decent pockets on the back of the chair in front. You've got a 12 volt socket there, which is useful for charging mobile devices. Though it would be better if there's some USB ports in the back here, but there's not. One slight issue is that you can't slide nor recline the seat backs like you can in something like a BMW X1. You can get slidey reclining seats in that car. In fact, if you want to watch my detailed video review of the BMW X1, just click up there on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen to watch that. In the meantime, though, I should point out that the good thing about the Evoque is not only do you have an armrest with some cup holders there, but the rear seats do split three ways. Hey, look, see? So you can carry longer items and still have people sat either side. Anyway, let's move on to the boot. So the capacity is by no means the biggest for this kind of car, but it's all right. And it's got quite a few nice features. So as you can see, it's quite square. It's not really a load lip and you've got this scuff plate, so it's easy to just slide things out without worrying about damaging your paintwork. There's some underfloor storage here. Now you have a tire repair kit there. If you want a spare tire, you can get one as an option. You've got some solid tethering points there, really strong. 12 volt socket here. There's a place to store your recycled cup from Land Rover there. And there's some netting there for some other bits of what I call crap. There's also some hooks there where you can hang bags off. What is annoying though is that there's nowhere 
to store the load cover in the car, but thankfully it's quite flat, so it's not too much of a problem. Alternatively, you can just treat it like it's junk because it's not your own car. Yes, I expect lots of comments about how I treat cars badly in the comment section below. Anyway, back on to the practicality. So here we go, look. Three-way split folding seats as standard on every single model. That's not something you get on quite a lot of these cars. NXC40 doesn't have that. Let me just try and push it flat. So I'm gonna have to just lift up the headrest, then it'll go a bit flatter. But as you can see, it's not the flattest load floor, but you can still slide items to the front, but they will slide back down again. You can get some upgrades as well for this car, such as, look at this. I always do this when there's a electrically operated tow hitch because there's something just a little bit rude about it now then it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car the infotainment system takes ages to turn on when you first get into the car so come on yeah i want to get underway now i want to program in the sat nav please boot up come on come on When you move the electrically operated seat backs, they make this noise. Ooh, it's as though you've had baked beans for lunch. This touchscreen for the climate control may look pretty cool, but it's actually quite hard to operate while you're driving because these buttons are quite small to hit. Also, depending on where the sun is, sometimes you can't see anything because of the glare. I'll demonstrate now. See, or maybe not see. Range Rovers don't exactly have the best reliability record in the world, so there is always a risk that you might end up at the side of the road just kind of like this. The car seems to constantly make this weird humming and groaning sound. Have a listen. It's really annoying when you're trying to do pieces to camera. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. The Evoke's clever four-wheel drive system basically runs in front-wheel drive mode most of the time to help save fuel, but then it engages the rear wheels as soon as you need some added grip. If you don't want your car's cabin lined with dead animal, then you can actually get a vegan-friendly interior for the Evoke, and it's actually made from recycled materials, and yeah, it feels quite nice. In fact, up to 33 kilograms worth of recycled materials are used in the construction of the Evoke. Now, the Evoque may be a little bit more expensive than other posh small SUVs, but it actually holds on to its value really well. So after three years, it'll still be worth, on average, 63% of the original purchase price. And that's why it's so cheap on finance. In fact, you can have one of these from just 250 quid a month. The optional clear sight ground view camera uses the front camera to record an image of the road ahead of you so that when you pass over it, you can see what you're driving over. For instance, there is my little GoPro camera and we're driving over it now, so it's under the bonnet, but I can still see it. The car's computer controlled all-terrain system allows you to set up the four-wheel drive system depending on what surface you're traveling on, so you can have it on normal. For slippery conditions such as grass or snow, for muddy ruts or sand. You can get the Evoque with a range of petrol or diesel engines, an entry-level car, the D150, has a 2-litre diesel, only 150 horsepower, it's going to be pretty slow, plus it's front-wheel drive and has a manual gearbox. And who wants a Range Rover with a manual gearbox and that isn't four-wheel drive? So you want one of the more powerful engines. In terms of diesel, there's a 180, but I'd upgrade to the 240, which is what this is. And then in terms of petrols, you have one with 200 horsepower, one with 250 horsepower, and one with 300 horsepower, and they're all 2-litre turbos. Now, the price difference between the engines isn't actually that great, so just go for the most powerful one with the petrol again. In fact, the most powerful petrol can do 0-60 in 6.6 .6 seconds, whereas this 240 diesel can do it in 7.7 .7 seconds, which is pretty decent. There will be a hybrid version of this car available at a later date, but I bet you want to know the price of this car. So this is the 240 HSC diesel. This price is £49,000. I'm going to put the details into the car wag configurator. What price can I get back? So I've got an offer back for 48500 
So only a 500 pound discount, but this is a brand new car. So the discounts will increase as time goes by. Also, it's worth just clicking on the pop out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen or following the link below the video to try out the configurator for yourself. So you can just check that the price you're being offered is a fair price. Now then let's see what this baby Range Rover is like on the road. This Range Rover Evoque is fairly easy to drive around town, so obviously you get a great view out over the traffic, you can look down on it, feel superior. The door mirrors are nice and large, which is great when you're manoeuvring and parking. What's not so good though is that the rear window is tiny and there's huge rear pillars which create massive blind spots, and that is a bit of a pain. What's also a pain is if you're putting it out at a junction, you suddenly need to accelerate, you put your foot down, and it takes an absolute age for the gearbox to respond and choose the right gear and for the engine to take off and you can just be left floundering. Another thing I'm not fully convinced about is how this car deals with bumps. So it is it is okay over bigger bumps, but the smaller bumps, it just fidgets about. It doesn't feel quite as soft or as comfortable as a Volvo XC40. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Volvo XC40, just click up there on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video. Now, as you get out on the motorway and go faster, the suspension does get better and it then glides. Also at speed, this car is nice and quiet. You don't get too much road noise. You don't get much wind noise either. The only noise you get is, once again, if you accelerate, if it kicks down, there we go, this gearbox isn't great. You get that noise from the diesel engine and it can be quite raucous. It's a bit of a shame that. One thing that the Evoque does have an answer for is corners because it may be tall, it may be quite heavy, but it's surprisingly good at going round bends. It doesn't lean too much. The steering isn't the fastest, but it's pretty precise. And you can tell what the front wheels are doing as well, so you know how much grip you've got, so you know when to back off because you're going too quickly. It actually steers really well, this thing, for an SUV. So the new Evoque is pretty good on road, but what's it like off it? The Evoque has a wading depth of 600 millimetres, which is better than you have with something like an Audi Q3 or a Volvo XC40. So you can go through deeper puddles than in those cars. Now you can actually upgrade to have special sensors fitted to underneath the door mirrors, which can measure the depth of the water so that you don't go deeper than 600 millimeters, because if you were to, you'd be having a very bad day. Now, if you should need to scale a steep-ish slope, you're gonna be better off in this Evoque than its main alternatives. And they actually give you the dimensions here, so the departure angle, the ground clearance and stuff like that, so you can check it. However, if you have the R dynamic version, it has a slightly different bumper design, and that means it doesn't have such as good approach angle, so you have to be a little bit more careful. I'm gonna to have to be a bit more careful here because I'm at the top of a steep slope. But I've got hill descent control. I use the cruise control to lower the speed. So I've set it to its lowest setting, which is four miles an hour, and I don't have to do anything. The car will brake itself. Like that. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to engage, but it did in the end, thank goodness. You can get the Evoque with two types of four-wheel drive system. There's the normal efficient system, which can move power between the front and the rear wheels. Then there's the active system, which is what this car has, which can also move power across an axle, which is handy when you're all doing this kind of thing and you've got a wheel off the ground because it can send power to the wheel that is actually on the ground, so you can keep on going forward, which is always handy. Now, while the Evoque is undoubtedly pretty capable off-road, it does have its limits. For instance, I can't go over this off-road section because it just doesn't have the ground clearance. I would need the full-size rangey, but really, who cares? You know, the kind of people who are gonna be buying this car ain't going off-road at all, are they, Howard? It's my instructor, Howard. Even he knows the score. <laughs> But you can always come and try out these cars in situations such as this if you want to, and someone like Howard will teach you how to do it properly. One of the reasons people won't be taking their Evokes off-road is because they won't want to end up having to do this to get all the mud off it. Because they'll end up getting their Labutins soaking wet. Yeah, I know I've got Nike here, but then I'm not an Evoke Target customer now, am I? So then, what's my final verdict on the new Range Rover Evoque? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Evoque. 
Might not be perfect and it's quite expensive, but this is a super stylish small SUV. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.